Hallelujah. Praise God.
somebody says and it hits our memory and we have a reaction to it but we don't always really understand the reaction how many of you know what I'm talking about in other words we react but the action does not communicate to us what the problem is Um, and this is, uh, this is where we need the action of the Holy Spirit. Um, next slide, God reveals, um, uh, we sense that something is not right. Um, that's the wrong slide. <laughs> Let's back up a little bit if you could. Do you have the wrong? Uh, okay. Um, it's in my center disc drawer. <laughs> And it loaded uh, the PowerPoint from last week. And I've changed that. Um, and if you have been through a trauma, 
Um, it might be the death of a relative. It might be a divorce. It may be getting fired from a job. It might be um, if you grew up in a family that had great dysfunction. Uh, it can imprint you and Satan who is a liar and the father of all lies will tell you a story to explain what you went through um, and it's usually uh, insufficiency of some part of us. Now, uh, I, I want to give you a little bit of a pitch for my wife's ministry, but she's got a ministry that helps you get in touch with the lies that may be in your life so that you can get ministry for them. But, um, um, Sometimes people like to walk on their brokenness and just keep saying, well, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. But you're not really healed till God heals you. You're not really restored until God restores you. Because these are not wounds, they're wounds of the heart. They are, um, if you will, um, difficulties that uh, penetrate to the depth of our soul. You are a body that has a soul and a spirit. And someday you're going to lose your body and your soul and your spirit are going to continue on. Amen. But you don't need to be wounded. <laughs> Amen. And we, um, uh, we go to the doctor uh, to heal our body. But for some reason, we're content a lot of times to live with wounds that are inside of us. Um, Satan's weapons. Uh, Satan cannot just come and overwhelm you. Um, he relies on you believing his lies. To be able to speak into your life. Um, Jesus in John chapter 8 said, you're, you're the father of the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. Okay, so um, I did not grow up in a uh, family that I would say was uh, healthy. We had dysfunction. Um, sometimes we had lots of dysfunction. And when people get angry and upset, they say things to us that they would not normally say. I'm reminded of Linda Ronstadt's song that says, you're no good. <laughs> and, uh, some of you are old enough to remember that, some of you are not. I saw a video where she sang it to a prison and everybody in the prison enjoyed it. <laughs> and see, that's a problem when we have an identity that Christ did not give us. And we have to achieve the identity of God's word 
not the identity from somebody gets angry at us and tell us we're a no good so and so and we'll never amount to anything. I don't know whether you've been told those words. You'll never be any good. How many of you have heard those words spoken over you? Yeah. You'll never amount to anything. And those become curses that a lot of times we receive. And in receiving those words, we partner with the enemy and it becomes a fulfilled prophetic word in our lives because we assume that there is truth in it. Yeah. It is so important that we take the truth of God's word for our lives and not what this world says to us I was uh, standing in the electrical vault, I was an electrician, and in that vault we lock out the switch gear, and we lock it out so somebody can work on a piece of equipment and not get hurt. And you fill out a tag with your name and you put your lock on that switch gear, and nobody is supposed to take that off. And I was at the mine one day and somebody came into the electrical vault where I was and wanted to take off this lock from a piece of switch gear. And his name wasn't on the tag. And so I said, well, you can remove the lock, but I'm not turning on this piece of equipment until that guy whose name is on the tag shows up because I don't want him thinking that it's locked out when it isn't. And a little bit, um, 10 or 15 minutes later, the guy who gave his key to the other mechanic to take it off came in spewing and fussing and he told me all kinds of things about my ancestry. <laughs> And I told him, I said, Charlie, I did it because I don't know whether you're still working on that equipment or not. Until you come in here and take your lock off, I can't be sure of that. Now, I believe that I did the right thing. <coughs> even though Charlie didn't. But, he nevertheless spoke all kinds of words over me that I chose to not receive. My parents were married when I was born. <laughs> not that that seems to make much difference nowadays, but... Um, what I'm, what I'm saying is, is somebody can say something to you and it is totally and completely untrue. But if it's spoken in a moment of anger, a lot of times it has an impact on it, on us and we will adopt it and we will listen to it and we will receive it. And what we need to do is to plead the blood of Jesus against it. Amen. And so it is important that we get down. Now, there are times in our life that, that we do not know um, what our problem is. And that problem 
even though we have become damaged, um, the truth is God's word. Now, I've passed out, or Chuck, or the guys have passed out some of these scriptures to you. <clears throat> and they're scriptures about who I am in Christ. And I think sometimes when we are feeling bad, what we need to do is go through the list and speak it and declare it and if you will say this is what the Bible says I am <coughs> this is God's truth some of the things that may have been said to me <coughs> like you'll never be good at math well how in the world um, does anybody know whether you're good at math or not? Because Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Come on. Amen. But you could have had a teacher that told you, well, you just aren't able to learn this. The, uh, the man that witnessed to my father was an engineer who could not read except out loud. And he became an engineer, mechanical engineer. He didn't become an engineer by the regular pathway, but he kept working on it until he could understand the material and perform and pass the test of an engineer. And I'm sure that he was told, Frank, you're no good. You can't read like you're supposed to. You need to go get a, a job shoving a wheelbarrow someplace. And Satan wants to put levels, labels on us that God has not put. He wants to say, well, your, your marriage will never survive, or this will never happen, or that will never happen. But God's word can speak against those things. And say, well, you'll never be a success in that business. I can tell Les over here, he doesn't know how to fish. <laughs> but he's been doing that for a living for a while. And, and I wouldn't let, know what to do on one of those boats. <clears throat> the, the problem is, when people speak in emotion, in anger, and when we have a failure, we tend to believe it. We tend to believe it. Uh, the problem that we often face is the words that somebody else speaks over us. Are words that we act on. Amen. Amen. Like the person who says, well, your father was an alcoholic, you're going to be an alcoholic. sat in a restaurant one time and there was a young man there and his dad was an alcoholic and he said well uh, today is my day to drink <laughs> yeah. 
Where did that come from? But he believed. And because he believed it, he was drinking. Wait a minute. Who said? And we need to do to the devil what he does to us. When God's word says something, Satan, and we receive God's word, Satan wants to come to us and say, well, you know, other people are saved, but you're not. Other people can have faith for things, but you can't. Or the reason that your mom and dad kicked you out of the house is you're no good. Or your relationship broke up because you're just not very good at loving people. And Satan will come with his multitude of lies saying, it's impossible for you to get an education. You're too old and can't think straight anymore. And if we're not careful, we will start acting on the lie instead of acting on the truth of God's word. You know, if you go through this, and I, uh, the reason I burned up a bunch of copier toner <laughs> was so that you could take this home and you could start saying this, I am God's adopted child. I am a friend of Jesus. I have been justified. I am one with him in spirit. I belong to God. All my sins are forgiven. I am complete in Christ. I have direct access to the Father through Jesus Christ. Amen. I am free from all condemnation. I am assured that God is working all things for my good always. I cannot be separated from the love of God. My sins are gone. I am hidden with Christ in God. God will complete the good work he started in me. I am a citizen of heaven. I am appointed to bear fruit. I am God's temple. I am a new creation, minister, and I am the righteousness of Christ. I am seated with Jesus in the heavenly places. I am God's workmanship. I may approach God with freedom and confidence. I can do all things through Christ. I am chosen, predestined, adopted, accepted, and redeemed. I am healed. I have sufficiency in all things. <coughs> and then you, if you're having a bad day, you go through this list and you start looking it up. Every scripture and you quote it. You read it out loud. I want to say something. It's not the same if you don't speak it. It's not the same if you don't speak it. But if you declare it, then read the word of God out loud and then say, Jesus, I receive this into my spirit. I accept what you say about me. This is my identity. And if you're having a bad day, God's word will get you out of it. 
Amen. Amen. And, and if you need ministry, um, it's available here. Um, through uh, the 61-1 ministry. But we have to take and detect the lie of what Satan is saying to us. Um, Satan wants to tell us, well, you will never, or God won't, a lot of those things. Well, God won't act against somebody's will. I have found that God can make people willing. In many cases. And sometimes it's a process in their life. But when you stand on God's word and you just start declaring, No, God, according to your word, I am healed. It belongs to me. Now I can make a list of scriptures on healing as long as this one probably. But you take God's word and you say, God, you said it. I accept this as truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it starts with our identity who are we? I, I remember one time I, I was out of a job and I, I don't do well unemployed. Um, I, uh, I just, I have a very great responsibility feeling to take care of my wife. Let me just put it that way. I am motivated to take care of her and provide for her. Is that okay? Yes. All right. I hope that's a good thing. And, and unfortunately, my motivation sometimes makes me feel insecure. But uh, I was in that situation where I was out of a job and I was out of a job because I quit my job and I wanted to get enrolled at the university to get an engineering degree. And I got an advisor that was an idiot. <laughs> Signed me up for all the wrong classes by the time I figured out that I was signed up for the wrong situation. Um, it was too late to drop ad, and so I ended up out of college and out of a job. That was not good for me because it resulted in me going to a mining company and starting a church. <laughs> um, and you guys can decide whether that was good or bad. But anyway, <laughs> that was um, 42 years ago. Yeah, 43. Anyway, um, so I can I can develop a belief system based on failure. And I was in a quandary and, and finally I, I was frustrated and wanted to do something. And by the way, it was during the, a down economy where jobs were not available. And most everybody had their jobs filled. Um, and, and so I went down and I just started praying and I, I was in frustration. I would pray, get peace, fall asleep at night, 
And then I'd wake up in a panic saying, oh, I don't have a job, what am I going to do? Now, we were not starving at that point. But finally, I came to a realization. I said, God, according to your word, you own the world and the fullness of it. Amen. God, I am your child. And I believe if my earthly father owned a corporation somewhere, that I could probably get him to give me a job. <laughs> because God, I am his child, and he would do that for me. And God, you are my father. And you will do that for me. Amen. You will do that for me. And so, as I began to pray, I felt motivated. I went down to the unemployment office. Said, well, I'm not eligible for at least six weeks, but I thought I'd get the paperwork done. She says, write down your qualifications. So I did. She picks up the phone, says, let me call. Called out at the mine. Naomi, this is Naomi. <laughs> Both had the same name. We're on speaking terms with one another. <laughs> the next question was, send him down to take the test and we'll see what happens. I took the test. I guess I passed it. They didn't show me anything that I said was wrong. And I ended up in a place called the Clear Plant, working with a guy named Bill Sams, right back there. <laughs> Say, Sometimes, as children of God, we have to expect a few things. Number one is our Father loves us. Amen. Thank you. Number two, there are benefits from being God's kid. Amen. Number three, we have access to privileges that others do not. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I am God's kid. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And he likes me. Yes. Yes. And because he likes me, he is going to take care of that which concerns me. And when truth impacts the lie, the lie has to fail. Um, so much for the PowerPoint. <laughs> but I want to tell you God loves you this morning. And if you haven't become God's child, there is tremendous benefit to becoming God's child. I want to say something else about God. God does not want you living in a state of fear or in a state of torment. That's not His will for your life. And He is willing to deliver 
from that. And if you don't get healed one way, by all means, come and let uh, some of our team minister to you so that you can get healed another way. But God cares about you. And He loves you. And He doesn't want us reacting to what happened 30 years ago. He wants us at peace with an identity of who we are. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And sometimes to get it within us, you've got to be a little radical. I know of one preacher that was rather famous. He used to put the Bible on his head, put his finger on the scripture, and walk back and forth before the Lord. God, according to your word, this is what you said. <laughs> you said, well, that's crazy. Whatever it takes to get inside of you, do it. If writing out a scripture 50 times is going to help, do it. If you need to make flashcards, make flashcards. I had a stack this thick in organic chemistry. <laughs> but God has not intended us to live without the blessings that belong to his children. Amen. And if you're his child, stand on what his word says. Amen. Amen. And if necessary, get somebody to pray with you <coughs> until you feel that peace and that joy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, let's stand together. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would enable us to stand firmly declaring who we are in you. We are forgiven. We are redeemed. We are made righteous. We are provided for. We are healed. We are whole. And Lord, we declare that and we claim that this morning. And we ask you to make who you are a reality, but that there is benefit to being your child. And because we are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, and because we are justified, we can do all things. Whatever life is ahead of us, whatever challenges we're facing right now today, we will be able to overcome because you are our Father. And Lord, we thank you for that and we praise you, Lord. Praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you're not God's child, please come up and Allow somebody to pray with you and introduce you and welcome you into the family of God. Bye-bye.